somebody news that international students should go home um, and stuff like that. You know, all those things are overwhelming. And the school is making effort, you know, to make sure that, you know, we are sane, we are fine and everything. But we still have some student groups, you know, that are still telling the university that universities are not doing enough. Even though I know they are doing enough, I feel they are doing enough rather. So I just feel that we need to hold um, people accountable in Africa and leveraging on social media, um, social media and everything we have. But in order to hold ourselves accountable, um, I think Zita on the chat group, she mentioned that we need to start from ourselves, which is very important. So the little resources you have, what are you using it for? You know, your community, your streets, are you holding them accountable? The CDA, Community Development Association, the CDC in, in, in our communities, are we really holding these people accountable? We are trained in Africa not to speak up. Our culture, we have a very beautiful and wonderful culture, but our culture does not embrace people speaking up. But I think it's high time we started speaking up. So, um, yeah, I think with this, um, the sky is a certain point for the youth at this particular time. Thank you so much. That yeah. was really, really enlightening. Um, I don't know if everyone is also writing down their takeouts from this session. I've been writing down a lot. Um, please, I encourage everyone to take note of things that pertains to them especially. Um, one of the things that I picked out from that was strong. We have to be very strong and res resilient in these times. Um, the fact that the world is changing doesn't necessarily mean we have to all um, lay low and discard the thought of creating a better Africa. Rather, it's time for us to be more resilient and stronger in our um, dream and African passion. Um, so there's no better time down now because where there are numerous challenges, there are numerous opportunities out there. So yes. Okay. Um, next question. Thank you so much, Sipasi. We're learning a lot. Thank you. Um, okay. So this is the last question before we move straight to the question and answer. Uh, in just a few minutes, I'd like you to give us key points, key starters, which were your key lessons and nuggets. Um, that so, you learned um, in your journey that can help the African youth that are looking forward to making a difference yeah, in their diverse communities. Yes. Yes. So, you know, I was born in the 1980s, you know, and um, I was born in a, I mean, in an era where faithfulness, diligence, and hard work are being rewarded, you know. So mm -hmm. this was the generation in which I was born. But now, other things are being rewarded in this current, you know, generation, like the car, the type of car you drive, the car, the type of jewelry, your social status, your kind of haircut, even the kind of house you live in. So these are the things we reward, you know. But I feel that the earlier we start um, taking our face or eyes away from these things, the better for us as a nation. So I feel that one of the advice I would like to give our youth is um, building healthy relationships. You know, it really helps a lot. You know, I cannot take out what I've done, the little I've done, you know, and um, the opportunities I've had out of the hands of very good relationships. You know, mm -hmm. then how do you build relationship? Relationship is built by not asking people for most times by not asking people for financial support. You know, most times, you know, we build relationship because of what we want to gain out of that relationship. But the way you should build relationship, which I feel that I struggled with a bit while I was, you know, growing up, you know, was actually offering people your expertise. Like, this is what I can offer, you know. So by offering people, they'll be very happy to, for example, um, after my engagement at the G20 summit, I just tweeted that, oh yeah, I'm in the, um, um, what's it called, in Germany, attending the um, Berlin Charter Conference and stuff like that. I'll be very happy to hook up with any politician in Nigeria. You know, one of the politicians reached out to me, you know, and I got to meet him today. Um, 
Afolabi Mwekwede is a very great mentor. He flew all the way down to Lagos to visit me in my community where I live and make my impact work. So, you know, so I feel that relationship is something that is very, very strong. And another thing we need to understand as youth is so many of us, we are eager to travel out of Nigeria. We want to be, you know, we want, we want, we want to travel to the U.S., we want to go to Germany, we want to go to Netherlands, you know, we want to go to developed countries and stuff like that. And sometimes we even know more about developed countries than our own countries. You know, we should actually take effort in knowing my community. You know, if there is one thing I did, I think I did well, was the fact that I knew my community inside out. So knowing my community, I'm talking about knowing Apeka, where I used to live in Lagos, knowing Ikorodu, the, uh, what's it called? Ikorodu, North LCDA. Knowing Lagos states, knowing the Southwest, knowing the Eastern part of the country, working in the Northern part of the country with farmers pro bono. I'm not saying you should go work pro bono, but I'm just telling you what I do. You know, so knowing your community is very, very important for you. And I think, you know, the way I knew my community back then actually helped me, you know, to actually help in projecting me. For example, two things you need to know about your community. Number one, the um, pH and the OPH. So who are the pH? The pH are the power holders. So when you talk about the power holders, you are talking about the imams in your community. You are talking about the pastors. You are talking about the title holders, the CDA chairman and people like that. You need to know them. Then the most important set of people you need to know in your community, they are the OPH, the other power holders. They are more powerful than the power holders in most cases. For example, you would have been in a situation whereby um, a community leader or even a king of a particular community or a kingdom will tell you that if you want to get this project done, go and speak with Mr. Afolabi. Do you understand? So they know that Mr. Afolabi has the people's back, is the people's person, and is and hold that power order with that an official title in that particular community. So when you know this set of people in your community, you'll be able to navigate, navigate your way around your community. You know, this has actually helped me. There was a time three um, German ladies visited me in my community. They lived in my community for three weeks. You know, safety was not an issue. It was an interior part of Ikorodu just because I understand the demography of my community. So um, I would like to um, encourage our youth and uh, my colleagues across Africa to make effort in knowing our community. And also, we have a lot of tourist sites. You know, when we go here as, um, as, as, as tourist attraction places, you know, sincerely speaking, they are nothing compared to Olu Morok, Olu Mirne, Waterfall, Erin Jesha, Waterfall and stuff like that. They are nothing compared, you know, but because they were able to manage their system and stuff like that. Another thing that um, you need to know is bad as it bad, as we used to say back at home, regardless of how unpleasant our countries or our continents look like right now, looks like right now, I want to tell you that a continent that you don't believe in can never deliver to you, you know, and a country you don't believe in will never deliver to you. I believe so much in my country. I gave back tirelessly to my country and um, I'm grateful that my country delivered back to me, you know. So the system might not be working. Nigeria is not the country. Nigeria is you and me. Ghana is not the country. Ghana is, the, is Ghanaian. Namibia is not the country, but the Namibians. So we are the country. Regardless of whatever, we have to believe in our country. We might not believe in the way the system is being run, you have to believe in it and create your system within the system. How do you operate within your family, you know, and stuff like that. Then um, in Africa, I feel that we don't value mentorship a lot. Um, I've discovered that a lot of people come to me, oh, Sipasi, please come and mentor me. Then two hours later, they tell me, oh, Sipasi, please, I need a recommendation letter. No, mentorship is like a seed, you know. The seed is very tiny. You need to plant it. You need to nurture it. You need to grow it. So when you grow a relationship, for example, I can call some, um, sorry, I can call some special advisors to the president, not even the vice president, today, 
to have a conversation with them without prior appointment. Why? Because I grew a relationship with them. So I think we should be able to um, get that done. Then um, I would like to mention that most times we do think we know more than enough. We do think we know a lot, but um, most times we are, we tend to be stone hearted You know, I really want to encourage us as African youths, if there's one thing I've learned here is the ability for continuous learning. You know, don't be in the position of the person that's going to speak all the time. So when you speak, you don't learn, but when you listen, you learn. So we should be able to learn on learn and relearn. It is very important for us to, in order to take Africa to where it's, um, it's going. And I, will, I, I cannot stress, um, I cannot overstress the fact that we should not be overzealous. You know, mm-hmm. we should not be overzealous. You know, I've seen people run into problem. Our government will remain our government. You know, there's no way we can change the system but if we are innovative about our campaigns, if we are innovative about going to the pool, you know, these are things we should do. Youth should go out and mass, you know, to vote, get involved in politics, and be ready to change things. The truth is, we complain a lot about our government, Africa is not working and everything. When we get to the place of power, we feel we've arrived, you know, so that should not be the aim. And most times in Africa, you know, when we get, um, when we get these particular positions, our families start celebrating that, oh yes, we are now in power, you know? Even your family's friend, they'll be telling you that, oh, don't forget us now because we are the one in power. They're expecting you to have looted funds in your aquiver. That should not be our aim. So um, I think these are the little advice I really have for my colleagues across the continent of Africa. Thank, Thank you. you so, so much, Supasi. I must say I've learned a whole lot. Um, because of time, we would stop with the questions already and uh, we'll look at the chat session. Before we go, before we go to that, let me quickly review some of the points Supasi has shared today as um, the nuggets and the kickstarters that he has picked up from his journey that is encouraging every one of us to adopt. The first is to build healthy relationships, nurture those relationships, good relationships that will help us in whatever plans we have in building the Africa we want. The second is to um, take effort in knowing our community in out. I think this is just to buttress what we have said in our last um, conversation for those who joined in we talked about knowing more about africa and our speaker has mentioned it today so many of us know so much about developing or developed countries and we don't know much about our own community this time around our speaker is challenging us to go deeper into knowing our own community inside out and he broke it down into two major people that would help us in building our developmental worlds from our communities the first is the ph the power holders. Um, the second is the OPH, the other power holders. So if we can look at uh, knowing these people, they will help support whatever vision we have from our community um, and growing our vision from there. The third is that we should believe in the country. A country we do not believe in cannot give back to us. And the fourth one is mentorship. We should grow mentorship and he explained how growing mentorship, um, mentorship relationship doesn't mean, okay, just going back to the person for letters and um, things of, of that nature, rather to learn from them so that they can be sustainable relationships for our future. And the next also is continuous learning, which is one thing that I really, really am learning and I'm enjoying the process, which is, one of the comments in the chat session, I really must appreciate Habib. He says, um, we have two ears and one mouth so, so that we can listen twice and speak just once. I just feel that is that just buttress everything. Two ears to listen double the time we actually speak. That is amazing. So our speaker has said we should learn, unlearn, and relearn in order to build the Africa we want. Then the last, which is to make our nerves calm 
is to not be overzealous um when we get to whatever point we feel we